Yes, people, how's it going? You're all right. So, me and the lovely Tammy here are about to take a road trip over to a place called Acklam, which is just outside York. So, we live in Peterborough, and it should take us roughly just over two and a half hours to get there. So, not too, not too, not a major road trip, but a, a decent one. So, uh, we're gonna head over there, and we're first one, yeah, our first proper road trip. So, we're looking to do a bit of wild camping. Um, I say wild, but it's not technically wild because uh, we've paid for a pitch there. It's 20 quid a night. Well, it is wild because we've got a field full of sheep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's like 300 sheep in this field that we're camping in and the, the only toilet there is is a compost toilet. So hopefully there's not too many people staying there. But uh, yeah, we're going to get ourselves over to Acklam um, and then we might even do a bit of exploration around York. So, uh, you know, we're not going to show you all the fields around Acklam. You know, it might get a bit boring just seeing the same greenery all, all thing. But uh, we'll, we'll have a little look around York as well because we're planning to have a little dive around there. It's one of our favourite cities in the UK or in England, sorry. Our favourite in the UK is actually Edinburgh. That's our favourite city in the world, isn't it? So, um yeah, we're going to get there now and we're going to go rock over and see what a campsite is like over in Acklam. So let's do it. Well, encountered our first problem. Let's have a look. We just encountered a crash. So the red means that there's heavy traffic. And we're just kind of creeping behind these guys now. So uh, <laughs> not the best start. We've only been on this trip for like, what, 20 minutes? Yeah. We've already hit a... Uh, a crash so hope the person's okay um really really hope that that's nothing serious this but um, on the, um, A1. But on yeah the this device. is on the a1 so uh gonna be creeping here for a while but we're still determined to make this trip so let's just hope this is uh one of the the small kind of hiccups in the journey but let's just keep going mate people we're here we're just about to get set up tom's there doing our thing and uh we're in a place called acklam so uh this is what it looks like got quite a nice view of the valleys and if you've noticed we've got quite a lot of sheep with us as well so uh i'm going to name each and every one of these sheep along the way i think but that's our view the rolling yorkshire hills we've also got a little fire pit here that we can use so we're going to use that but what i need to do is it's been a pretty a fairly long trip for us weak british people i know in america you know a three hour trip is nothing for you guys so you're probably having a laugh there but uh yeah, for us, <laughs> for us, for us Brits, that's a considerable distance. So uh, I'm gonna go and find the toilet. So here, they actually have a compost toilet and uh, gotta watch where I walk. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, sheep doo doo. But uh, yeah, they seem friendly enough. I mean, I haven't been attacked by one yet. I think they're probably quite, uh, quite sheepish. <laughs> so gonna go and find the compost loo. But yeah, I'm quite looking forward to, to, to doing this. Uh, I think the last time we did a wild camping adventure was over in Fort William in Scotland um, and uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was quite an interesting one so if you've not seen it before uh, go and check out our video it's uh, basically like a, we took a 10 hour trip to get to Fort William and uh, what time was calling me then uh, it didn't go too well <laughs> we tried to wild camp because obviously in Scotland you've got wild camping which is basically you can camp wherever you like within reason of course so we arrived at Fort William and we decided to go camping and we couldn't because uh, there was nowhere to camp we just didn't know the area well enough and so uh, we ended up put, uh, booking a, a, a pitch just opposite uh, Ben Nevis which still to this day is one of the best places I've ever been um, I've got a great love for Scotland I absolutely love that country I love the Scottish and uh, yeah, generally, I uh, I love nature and scenery. So this is what we got. Lots of sheep. I've got a few uh, younger sheep there, so I will give them a bit of space because uh, I doubt they're going to want me trudging around. I get, might get uh, rammed into. But uh, yeah, let's just have another look at this. Uh, another look at this. Look at that, peeps. That is England for you. So compost toilet's just down here, and. Uh, I'm planning to try and do a little bit more England content because, uh, to be honest, I watch a lot of YouTubers who really do paint England in quite a bad light. And yes, we have our problems. Of course we do. What country doesn't? But I think actually there's a lot of beauty in England. And uh, I want to try and help showcase that and try and 
try and help get rid of the perception that England's this horrible country um, because there are some nice spots now again don't get me wrong there are some bad places funnily enough where we live me and Sam it's voted as a uh, one of the worst places to live in the UK but uh, you know what can you do I guess that's just how it is there is a video on that as well but uh, that's how you get in so there's a gate and uh, you have to make sure it's uh, well locked when you come in and out if you visit this place so uh, here we go compost loo and it's also got a tap as well which is cool so it's only 20 quid to pitch here and we're about half an hour away from York as I mentioned so York being one of my favourite places in the UK or in England sorry sharp to be more precise um, really pleased to be able to go and check that out and uh, probably share a little bit of that with you guys as well um, I'd like to dedicate an entire video to York but uh, well there's probably just loads already to be honest so I don't know how much justice I can do it because uh, it's too too nice a city I don't think I could really give it the, the love it really deserves <laughs> I'll just be there like Wow, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. I love everything about York, it's my favourite place. So yeah, it's quite a, quite a walk. So if you do come here, don't drive down the left when you get to that gate. Do not drive down the left because you'll get stuck. You won't be able to get back up there. That's what they told them. Uh, that's what the owners of this place told us themselves. So uh, yeah, gonna keep looking now with this compost lill. I'm not looking forward to the walk back up because that's quite a steep hill. <laughs> but when in the country, you've got to do what you've got to do. And uh, we've got some of the flattest pitches. We're the only people here, guys. 20 quid a night. We're the only people here. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard that song. Uh, um, what is it? Jack and Jill went up to the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down, broke his crown. <laughs> and Jill came tumbling after. So I've got a bit of a bad feeling about this, uh, this incline here. Because <laughs> I'm quite clumsy. But anyway, I digress. There's a compost toilet. I'll give, I'll give you a little look at that. I'll show you the water facilities. I probably should have brought a bottle here, really. But uh, yeah, and then we'll do a bit of exploration of the local area on foot. See if there's anything nice. And then we'll get ourselves into York, show you a little bit around there and uh, show you a bit of the beauty of Yorkshire because it's a great county and uh, the people here are fantastic. So let's go. There you go, guys. There it is. These sheep are vocal. <laughs> Hey guys, great to see you all. So yeah, this is the compost toilet. And uh, let's get a good look at this place. It's, cool. it's even got its own little gate, look. Wow. So, of course, I'm sure it's to stop the sheep from, uh, from trying to use it. I mean, I don't know what a sheep would want with a compost toilet, but here we go. And let's have a little look. Okay, cool. So, actually, compost toilet just there. Everything you need. Happy days. And I believe as well that somewhere around here there's some running water. I don't think it's that. <laughs> I have to look into that. I think, but uh, there's a tap around here somewhere with clean drinking water and. Uh, Somehow I don't think it's this. <laughs> it can't be. Looks more like a thing for the sheep. I mean, I'm a, I'm a country boy. Uh, sorry, not a country boy. I'm a city boy. Oh, it's over there. I'm a simple city boy. Don't worry, I'm keeping an eye on the sheep so they can't go and nick the toilet off me. Oh, give that little clothes though. Uh, here we go. Right. So if you guys are planning on coming over and checking this place out, you've got a little tap here. There you go. I won't use too much of that because obviously that's a resource. But uh, yeah, so there you go, guys. So I'm gonna go and do my thing, get back up that hill. Hopefully, don't break my crown up there, and uh, go and help Tammy with this uh, tent. Give you a little tour of what we got. So Tam's kindly rolling that up for us. Cheers, love. And we've got obviously true British must-have tea wherever we go. So. We've got a collapsible kettle oh, and uh, we've also got a uh, a burning stove. Now this is obviously a fireproof tent but we probably will take this out later whilst we're doing it but there you go. 
there's a lot of um, ventilation in there, but yeah, just to be on the safe side, it probably won't burn that in here. And got a little lantern for later. Got ourselves stocked up with uh, some pots and pans and then some tarp on the floor just to keep things dry because well you know what England's like and if I just undo this then what we've got is that we've got a little memory foam mattress topper and then we've just stuck our quilt and some pillows there so it's a little bit more uh, comfortable than it was in Scotland when we went there because we literally had a thin little mattress and then as we come out this will be our view I'll just zoom in there for you so that's what we're going to see. So I'm just going to yeah, name all these. Uh, going to just name all these uh, sheep Sean. And if you're not from the UK, we have a show called Sean the Sheep, a ch children's show. And uh, there's a good landmark for you if you decide to come. There's like a radio mast here. I will put a link to this place in the description as well, so you can come and visit yourself. But uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. So that's the stay. We're going to do some cooking later. Um, so we're going to go and grab some produce now. I'm going to probably head over to York. The city of York is only about half an hour away from here and it's one of our favourite places as I mentioned so we're going to go and grab some, grab some supplies over there so once we're over there we'll show you around so you can see it but uh, yeah. Well your parking space you did it again. <laughs> you sent us to a place that was closed so we were unable to uh, actually get into the car park we had originally booked which cost us eight quid so now we had to pay 12 quid to park in this rather fancy parking space that overlooks the city wall and uh, it's not the first bad incident we've had with uh, your parking space because uh, they also uh, we paid for a parking space and then we got contacted by a company and told us that they we owed them a hundred quid fine I was like but we, we paid for a parking space and we read everywhere that it quite often happens but we're in York anyway and uh, we're kind of on the tail end of it so we're gonna get into it now have a closer look and uh, see what it's like, so let's go. All right guys, so with the parking uh, situation sorted, we uh, are now enjoying some of the more old style York, and as you can see right here, that's the uh, the old Minster building. It's massive and an incredibly beautiful place. Now me and Tammy, we actually are planning to move this way in a couple, well, about a year's time. Uh, and we're hoping to move up to Yorkshire because, uh, to be honest, we just generally prefer the people and uh, the kind of more chilled, chilled pace of life. Um, and of course, the city is a lot more prettier as well. And of course, there's also lots of good camping spots there as well if uh, if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not here to promote York, obviously, but we won't. We probably won't move into York. It's uh, <laughs> quite a nightmare to drive around can't deny the streets are quite nice but uh yeah we'll get a video out the front of the uh out the front of this old building now here we go people as promised here's the uh the minster the front of it and uh yeah i'll flip it over so i can get zoomed in and uh you can get see some of the details in there i mean look at these gargoyles up there look and the glass and stuff like that and English architecture is pretty, pretty damn amazing. So uh, yeah, easily one of my favourite cities. Oh, look at that! Listen, what timing? <clears throat> the only problem with York, I find, is there's a lot of Instagrammers, loads of them. We just saw quite a funny thing a minute ago. Actually, <laughs> we saw this woman walking, and behind her was her boyfriend filming her like this as she was walking, looking behind herself like this. I was just like, I can already hear the TikTok music playing itself. <laughs> each of their own I guess but anyway so this is pretty much York for you very very beautiful city I'm not going to show you around all of it because to be honest that's not really this video is about it's more about the wild camping that we're going to be doing but whilst we're here I thought I'd show you around and do give it a visit I will quickly show you the shambles actually because that's quite a nice street it's one of the oldest streets in the UK um, so we'll go down there and I'll quickly show you that before we head back to the campsite to go and do a bit of cooking let's go Alright, just heading over to the shambles now and uh, yeah man, this, uh, this place is nuts, like it looks like it's something out of a completely different, completely different world but it's very very well preserved so let's uh, give it a flip over and uh, 
I'll show you around. So there you go, you can see it there. So it's called the Shambles, but it used to be called Flesh Shambles, which I think uh, was Danish, actually. A Danish word, because this was a very much a Viking city. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty old and it's pretty well preserved as well. And it used to be a butcher's market. And uh, what they used to do is up these windows, they used to just chuck all of the stuff out of the window, uh, like the blood and the uh, organs and stuff like that. They just chuck it out the window and they'd be doing their business, cutting all the meat up here. And this streets would have been completely filled with blood and uh, offal and stuff. So it wasn't the uh, most prettiest smelling city or smelly, uh, prettiest smelling street. It's not too bad now. It's pretty much now just become a homage to uh, like tourism and uh, also to uh, Harry Potter, strangely enough. Even though there's very, very little connection to Harry Potter, I believe this is kind of based on Diagon Alley from what I've heard. I don't know how true that is, but uh, Harry Potter was actually written and inspired by Edinburgh, which again is one of my favorite places. So uh, yeah, there's a cool little place down here. There's a little, little market street down here as well. So if you like world food, well worth going down there. And uh, you'll see an example shortly of a uh, there you go, look, Harry Potter themed shop. It's closed at the moment, but there you go, look. So they kind of cashed in on that. But we've got to look down that little uh, little street actually, Tam. I'll go and show you the people uh, this little area just down here. And there's actually, um, from what I remember, a Christmas shop here. Oh, is it past? Is it past? There you go, look. So that song, Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day, I managed to do a key on York, but there you go, so that's actually York for you. So, not the central focus of this video, of course, but I uh, thought it would show you around whilst we're here. So we're actually here to pick up some groceries and bits for our wild camping meal later. So uh, we're gonna go and find <coughs> some sort of an Audi or a Lidl, something cheap. I did see one on the way in and uh, we're gonna get some bits and then hopefully do some uh, do some uh, cooking so let's get back to the campsite we'll go and do a bit of shopping and uh, we'll get back there and start cooking so let's go all right people so we're back at the site at our little excursion to York and we got some bits uh, from uh, Sainsbury's <sighs> just our luck well it's a little bit cold no i don't look it but if we have a look over here look that's a, that's now the view look guys <laughs> we, yeah fog yeah we paid we paid for a room with a view and now we got this um i'm glad we came back when we did yeah exactly yeah tom was just i don't know if you can hear what she was saying she's glad we, she's glad we came up when we did because conditions are starting to get quite foggy so uh that's kind of now what we're looking at but obviously got the tent happy days That'll keep us warm and uh, it doesn't look like the sheep have been going around in there too much. The only problem is, is that it's a good old walk to get down there to the old uh, to the old toilet and the, the water. So we brought, we brought some water and uh, today we're going to be cooking up, uh, we're going to do macaroni and cheese. We're going to do it from scratch as well. So uh, we've, we're going to do a bechamel sauce and uh, we're going to have that with some meatballs. Macaroni, cheese and meatballs, I eh? can't go wrong. So we'll have that and uh see how we get along cooking i'm not sure if the uh the sheep are going to give us a wide berth when we're cooking but uh as i say that's we've got a few other people we've got like two other tents down there so three other tents sorry three 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 more tents down there and uh yeah so we're gonna get inside here now it's just about to start raining as well i'll try and oh god they've, they've laid they've laid some fresh ones for us so i'll try and give you an idea of what the roads are like around here Hey guys, don't you worry, I'm not here to hustle you. For some reason, they really like these bushes. I'm not sure why. The strange thing is though, is that the field... Oh, sorry guys, I didn't mean to start with you. Um, the field don't smell as bad as you would expect it to, being covered in sheep's droppings. But uh, that's the road, pretty much all the way down here. That's the road. you got a couple of passing places, but it is quite a small road and... Uh, God, really, I've laid down some fresh deuces. I've got to watch my step. Um, but we don't just, blimey, there's so much poo. Um, we don't just have uh, sheep for company. 
we've got cows. Now, interestingly, I've got an interesting story about cows. Uh, my, oh, whoa, zoom that out. So my, uh, my sister and mum did something very similar to this, but they did some glamping. And uh, we're in a field full of sheep right now, but they're in a field full of cows. And these cows took a massive dislike to my mum and sister and the kids out with them. And they chased them across this field. And luckily for us, we've got some barbed wire, but uh, I'm not sure how close they really when I get to these guys. But uh, yeah, you look quite cute to be fair. Hello. Yeah, got some cows for company. I guess I'll just call them all Betty. I'm not gonna get too close because uh, cows can be quite territorial apparently. At least according to my sister. <laughs> As I say, I was like, wow, why, why were you getting chased by cows? And she was like, from what I've read, they're very territorial animals. And because we was in their part of the field, they were like, out you get. Now the sheep, they're quite different. They don't really want to have anything to do with humans. Though sometimes the baby sheep get curious and uh, want to come over and look at us. And uh, I think that's quite cute, really. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know if we can stroke them. I don't know if that would upset the, uh, the mum, but there you go. Two little ones just there, look. Hey, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the situation, as I say. So the view we paid for is now somewhat obstructed. Hey, guys, don't you worry. I'm no harm to you. I'm no harm. Um, but yeah, you've, it's, really, it's like a game of hopscotch on this field. There's a lot of uh, drop-ins, obviously naturally, you're in a sheep's field. But don't let that detract from the fact that this is an incredible place. It really is. Like, uh, obviously, yeah, fog, Britain happens, but the views have been really nice. And the sheeps, obviously, as I say, they're curious, but very docile. They don't really seem to care that we're here. It's almost like kind of a custom. They, just move out the way, they? they do just shift out the way eventually. All right, guys. So whilst Tam's doing her thing, I'm gonna start cooking up dinner. That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> the pan not even balancing. And as I said, we're doing macaroni cheese today. So uh, we bought some uh, water. Now we're going to have to uh, get the pasta in. So, uh, I think we're going to be graced by. Water. So we just got a bottle of water. We have got some down there, but it's a good old walk to get there. I wish I brought some salt, could have seasoned the water, but I'm gonna start off by cooking this pasta until it's relatively al dente. This ain't really a cooking channel to be honest guys, but we both do know how to cook from scratch, obviously. We have a life skill really, in it? And uh yeah, got a got some macaroni, happy days from Sainsbury's. So uh Got to do it the authentic way. You can't use any penne or anything like that. <laughs> so let me crack this open. It's quite hard to do this uh, one-handed. So, oh, cheers, love. Oh, we've got a camera woman now. So, to be honest, this will probably expand. So, probably did a bit more than I need, but and there we go. So, we're just pretty much going to cook that now to the boil, and then uh, once that's cooked, then. Uh, we shall start work on the roux. Right, onto the actual mac and cheese bit or the actual sauce, the bechamel. Now, obviously, first things first, you wanna heat up the milk. Um, basically, if you do it cold, the uh, the grains from the flour, they basically swell up. That's what thickens it up. So if you don't warm the milk up, it kind of makes that process a bit more difficult. But we've got our cooked pasta there, so that's good. And we've got all of our ingredients here. Some cheese, got some flour. So I heat this milk up melt some butter, add a bit of flour, and then slowly pour in this heated milk over time. And then we'll get a nice thick sauce, and then we'll add the cheese, and then we've got ourselves a cheese sauce, which then we add to the pasta, bish bash bosh. Nice and easy dinner. Not bad for this kind of cold weather as well. Right, sorry to interrupt. Uh, didn't manage to capture all of the cooking video because uh, must have forgot to press the old big red button on this uh, recording device. But thankfully, we did actually capture it on our phone because we're simultaneously recording it on this camera and our phone at the same time, um, just for social media and stuff. So we'll show you that version instead. 
um, so I do apologize if the camera quality suddenly changes but don't worry it's only for a, a couple of minutes and then it'll go right back to the normal video so just a heads up just in case you like what's going on there that's the reason so let's get back to it right so one thing we didn't realize is that we were running out of gas on this thing look at that it's a better flame so now we're going to melt the butter and we've got a pan of hot milk that I've just been doing and this is how to make a nice bechamel look at that view beautiful I say beautiful but it's foggy currently but it's it makes a change to Peterborough I guess doesn't it <laughs> but get that I mean you should use real butter obviously but to be honest with it being quite cold today it's taken a while for it to uh, be spreadable for tomorrow's uh, breakfast so get it to a melted state Yeah, I'm just going to turn it down a little bit and then pop you there and then the flour comes into play now so oh man, you need to be strong to do that I tell you and you've got the nuttiness as well coming out from that vegetable shortening whatever you want to call it so then a couple of kind of a couple of tablespoons of flour And, start, and this is called a roux. Probably a little bit more than I needed actually. I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I think I need a bit more fat, I'm not sure. So, I'm just gonna add a bit more fat to that. Really should be uh, weighing this out and stuff, but while cooking, it's called while cooking for a reason, I guess. Okay. It's a bit better. And now, we've got the milk that we heated earlier. You definitely want to heat the milk when you do a roux, uh, a white sauce. You add it in gradually. Really, I should be stirring right now. But and you stir vigorously and you want to beat out them lumps. I need to really get in there. Like that. And then it starts to thicken up and starts to absorb all that milk. Happy days. And then in with some more milk and I'm just going to raise that temperature up again and I'm going to complete this white sauce and I'll show you what it's like when it's finished right so that is the white sauce thickened up so now Tam's going to go ahead and add the cheese I'll fix that later <laughs> occupational hazard and all that and this is this is it really i mean to be honest you could add a bit of mustard as well and a bit of worcester sauce if you really wanted to but uh i think tam likes the cheese we'll save some for the topping though love don't you uh don't you go too crazy there <laughs> if we were at home the mustard and that and mustard worcester a bit of worcester sauce yeah salt pepper all this all this stuff but i don't really think this fully through we didn't bring everything we needed so uh not the smartest move on our end but get that uh, thickened up and then just down here can you just quickly move that for me, Tam? Just down here, I got some pasta. So we get that mixed in with there, and that's the mac and cheese done. And then we just top it with a bit more cheese, and that's it. Happy days. All right, guys, so the final stage now, cooking up these meatballs. Just gonna fry them in that lovely uh, butter. But yeah, got the, uh, the old mac and cheese there. Just letting the cheese kind of melt in the residual heat. Got a bit of light in here, because, uh, getting a bit dark now but yeah just gonna fry off these meatballs and then uh mac and cheese meatballs and then uh we're gonna get our trusty uh, it's all mental over there but i'm gonna get our cup um trusty kettle make a cup of tea meatballs cup of tea british rain happy days mm -hmm. 
And there we go, guys. Mac and cheese made. There's quite a lot there, actually. And the meatballs got a little bit cremated, but uh, I'll have to... Tammy's just... Uh, I don't know if you can see, but she's just trying to lock this uh, window. We're getting quite a lot of heavy rain now, so uh, I can't use that anymore. But uh, yeah, man, mac and cheese out in the world. Do you want to have a little try, Tam? I will in a second, just let me um, zip it up. There you go, you zippity zip, all that jazz. Got a bit of coleslaw on there as well, because why not? Mm. Good? Yeah. What's the meatballs like? Any good? I mean, Did we didn't I? really season them or anything, did we? Mm. Here we go. All right. I'm going to enjoy this and then we're going to probably settle down and uh, we'll show you in the morning what the place is like in the mornings. Morning, people. How's it going? <laughs> what a night it's been. So, uh, how's things gone? Well, Unfortunately, <laughs> we uh, actually built our tent on what seems to be quite a quite a weird angle. We ended up being on the hill, uh, kind of going at that kind of <laughs> that kind of slope like that. So uh, I was laying there, and I was like, "Man, this is very uncomfortable." I was kind of like that <laughs> for the whole thing. So uh, yeah, it's currently half five in the morning, and uh, I just. I couldn't sleep and then all around me, I don't know if you hear it, I'll pause, might be able to hear it. There you go. Just outside the tent, literally a few metres away from me, there's like probably about 10 sheep just surrounding this entire thing, which is a bit weird. I don't mind sheep though, I mean they're harmless enough aren't they, but uh, when there's 300 sheep in a field with you and there's only what i think there's like 15 people in this field currently like there's a family of five over there there's us two and there's a couple more families down there we're kind of outnumbered so if the sheep wanted to overthrow us they could <laughs> so aside for that the uh the weather got really really bad yesterday i think uh i'll have to check actually but i'm sure that we're due thunderstorms today let's have a look there you go, look, I don't know if you can make that out too well, but potential thunderstorms today. And uh, we had a lot of it, kind of the onset of that yesterday, so it was pouring it down. And uh, at some point we were like, is this tent going to hold up? Is it going to be able to manage it? Because uh, we don't build tents very often. We do a lot of travelling abroad um, and don't do much camping, but we really enjoy camping, so we're going to try and do more. And... Uh, yeah, we just didn't know if the tent would hold it, but it did, thankfully. But it has led to a new problem, which is where the field is completely sodden. It is completely waterlogged now because uh, of how heavily it rained. And if you recall earlier, the uh, the actual uh, compost toilet is down on a hill. So that hill is now basically a, a water slide of sorts. So if I was to go down that hill, I'd either come crashing down it or on the way up, slip up it. So the compost toilet and the water is now off limits. But thankfully, from yesterday's uh, macaroni pasta, we still have some uh, water left. So we're going to use that to make a cup of tea. And as well as this, we also actually have, uh, we, we brought some sausages as well. I think it was caramelised onion sausages. So... Uh, yeah, we've uh, we we pre-cooked them, and we got some baguettes, and we have a little bit of cheese left from the mac and cheese. So uh, we're gonna have cheese and caramelised red onion sausage baguettes, and a cup of tea to start our morning today. So we'll make them in a bit. But uh, yeah, the only thing I'll say is that when we booked this pitch, nothing was mentioned about three hundred sheep. I'll tell you that for free, like going through the airbnb thing there was nothing about free sheep would it put me off no definitely not i think it was quite interesting quite quirky but i do think some people are quite afraid of you know animals so i think that should have been disclaimed personally um in my opinion because literally we booked it and then in the booking instructions it was like hey don't forget to lock the gates when you come in because there's 300 sheep in the field with you it's like what? <laughs> 300. Okay, fair enough. 
so if you're booking this place and you're not fond of uh, animals then uh, do be aware of that but hey you know it's the countryside what do you expect you know so uh, I find it quite 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 charming that we've been surrounded by sheep all day makes sleeping quite difficult because every now and then you'll hear I'm not gonna make the noise because if I do an impression of them they'll just start coming over <laughs> They think that I've got one of them captive in here, so they'll try and come and save him. <laughs> so if I'm not going to do an impression of one, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the situation. So the field's waterlogged. Hopefully the uh, fog's going to clear up, but yeah, I'm going to try and get a tiny bit more sleep before uh, before we start, you know, packing away everything. But as I say, with the sheer number of sheep around us currently, it's it's quite hard. But anyway, we'll get packed up, get a cup of tea made. Get some uh, breakfast on and enjoy one last view before we close things off so let's do it all right guys things are clearing up a little bit and we're getting a little bit more visibility so uh we've uh decided to make our tea and we've already prepped the uh the sandwiches sausage and cheese and all that got all of the things with the milk sugar got some tea bags i'm gonna wait for that bad boy to boil and then we're gonna enjoy a nice little view across the landscape hopefully this uh, fog will clear up even more and we'll get a nice view before we leave it's been quite the day i tell you it's uh we've yeah it's what what time is it now let's have a look it's now 10 to 7 10 to 7 and uh yeah finally packed up everything the tents now completely packed away and uh we like to leave the place how we found it so i'm gonna give it a couple of scrutinies before we leave but yeah man all in all i'd say i enjoyed it i mean obviously you know having sheep for company in the morning it's a bit different you know but they are certainly quirky characters and they didn't really hustle us too much to be honest and uh we've got a relatively nice view of the sprawling valleys so uh what do you reckon sam what do you reckon of it yes nice. we're just gonna enjoy this now and uh start heading back to peterborough shortly but uh yeah would i recommend it definitely just obviously if you're afraid of animals just be aware that you are in an open field with you know with sheep right next to you um and it's probably better to come in summer when it's a bit less rainy so you can really enjoy those views a bit longer during the day but actually yeah it's uh genuinely a really unique stay and uh not one you'll find in many places so st acklam uh again i'll put the airbnb link in um and thank you very much for having us it was a great stay and uh yeah we just want to say thank you very much for watching uh as always we hope you guys have a great day and we'll catch you all very very soon take care